A puppy was presented to us because it has been vomiting and having bouts of diarrhea for more than a week now in the previous clinic. And take note, it is negative for Georgia, distemper, and parvovirus. How we handle and treat this condition? Please stay tuned. Welcome back guys, my name is Dr. Thresho and every week we post videos, cases, topics and tips on how to better take care of your fur babies. I said every week, the last video I think I posted was 5 months ago, it was the clinic tour on our newest branch in North Edsa, in Munoz. So since then, we continued renovating that place and then we renovated our main branch, the Timog branch, which we will show in the next vlogs. And also fix the other clinics that we have. So it has taken my time because I did this in the middle of the pandemic. But a lot of the videos that we perform, a lot of the cases that we perform in the last few months were all stored in one hard drive. They are all waiting to be vlogged. Before we proceed, please hit like, subscribe, and bell button so you get updated from whenever we post new videos in this YouTube channel. And follow us on Facebook, Dockford's Animal Wellness Center, and on Instagram. Dockford's Animal Wellness Center and my personal Instagram account, Ferd's Resho. On with our case for today. So Cody is a three-month-old male golden retriever that was brought into our care because it has been vomiting and diarrhea and no sense of improvement. Negative on parvo tests, negative on Georgia and Corona. Yes, coronavirus. The owner wanted a second opinion, so they brought the dog to us. On presentation, it has a fluid attached to its right leg, hind leg, no? and it is lethargic, matamlay, severely dehydrated, talagang mahina siya, putla. I think uh, 8 to 10% dehydration yung uh, meron siya. No? Talagang mahina na, ayaw rin kumain, and if it will eat, isusuka niya. When we do the physical exam, makita mo, may huge pal palpable mass in the abdomen and we asked the owner if we can st still perform several tests and she agreed no initially we did blood tests cbc and chemistry and because of that suspicious palpable mass in the abdomen i performed radiograph or x-ray no so x-ray Aka, hindi natin masyado nakita yung uh, yung mass that i'm trying to figure out what doon sa so x-ray, no? Kasi the abdomen is covered with hazy fluid, no? It uh, has increased fluid capacity, which is uh, a sign of fluid accumulation or fluid buildup in the abdomen. So we did ultrasound and indeed we found the solid mass actually inside the intestines. So I asked and asked permission uh, from the owner if we can perform an exploratory laparotomy. Ano ba yung exploratory laparotomy? Ito yung when the doctor will open the abdomen, examine thoroughly the organs in the abdomen. And when the doctor finds the problem, it will try to fix it. Sometimes just to rule out other problems, no? Para, okay, nakita na natin. It's not that, it's not this. So sometimes like that. Now, kung makita, mabuksan, tatanggalin yung, prob yung, yung problem, if there's obstruction, if there's a mass, if there's a tumor. That's when we fix it. That's exploratory laparotomy. She agreed, and we started prepping itong si Cody. Are you getting this? Right. So we have to get this up into the section. And it's open. Ah, oh, you may perforation na. Yun, look. Oh. Okay, look at that. Sige, hila, hila, hila. Okay, alright. So, okay, okay, ako. Okay. Yeah, para tayo magagawa. Ano na talaga siya yun? Look at this, huh? Okay. So, 
Hold up. Hindi na ito viable. Ben, uh, telescoped for or uh, nag, meron siyang interception for the past week already. So nagkaroon na ng local na crosses. If you notice, yan ang nasisira na when you move. Ang nangyari kasi, itong small intestine went inside the large intestine. So that's the watchable uh, interception. Interception. So ibig sabihin yung maliit na bituka pumasok sa mas malaking bituka. Nag-telescope. It's a telescoping of the small intestine into the large intestines. No? So, ano nga ba nangyayari kapag merong uh, interception? So, kapag pumasok yung small intestine into sa large intestine, syempre yung lumen nababara. Hindi makapasok yung pagkain. Kaya merong pain, merong vomiting, and diarrhea dun sa mga natitira portions ng intestines. No? It will continue to spasm and fix itself. Kaya meron ding lalong, mag, lalong sasakit yun dyan. No? At syempre, since hindi siya makakain, hindi siya makainom ng tubig, you know, manghihina, madidehydrate, no? And then the cascade of problems will take place. Upon examination of the intestines, a portion of it is already punctured. Kung na punit na, nasira na. Madaming cause kung bakit nangyayari ito. Parasitism is one of the main causes of uh, interception in puppies. That's why it's very important for you to um, perform or do the warming regularly sa puppies, no? This is the large intestine and this is the small. You will see the difference in size. So what we can do is for it to uh, mag-accommodate. The other one we can shorten or uh, make it smaller. Or we can angle it in such a way that uh, ma-accommodate niya yung size. No? I think what we can do here is just uh, close this one and then para magdikit na lang sila doon ipapaliitin na lang natin yung small distance the other, the other technique is that we can actually close this and dito sila sa gilid magkadikit no? that's one technique that we can actually use but we can, we're not going to use that paano ba natin malalaman kung kailangan ng putulin yung intestines no? it's a procedure called Intestinal resection and anastomosis. So, intestinal resection and anastomosis. So kapag nangingitim na yung kulay ng intestines, kapag masyado nang namamaga na bubula, masyadong manipis na yung intestines, no? Uh, and kapag wala nang blood supply, wala nang wala nang pintig doon sa bituka or lastly, kapag hiniwa mo, wala nang blood na lumalabas. Ibig sabihin patay na yung segment ng intestines. It has to go. We examine thoroughly Hiniwa, tinanggal natin yung part na yun ng intestine that's already uh, causing the problem. And then, pinagdugtong natin yung dalawang magka, yung mga healthy intestines, no? Tinahin natin siya. That's what we did. And after that, we cleaned uh, the abdomen and then closed the abdominal cavity accordingly. If you notice, bulok na talaga. Look at this, oh. Tingnan mo to the cavity. Wala na talaga. Bulok na dito. Necrotic na siya talaga. So even if we're able to take it out, wala na rin. It's not viable anymore. Talagang tatanggalin mo na. So just gonna cut this uh, through. So yan. And another layer. Yan, oh. So nandito lahat yung blood niya. Kaya siya may anemia. Look at this. It's all. It's all bloody. Yeah, no? Itim na talaga yung loob. See? Ay, ay, sorry. <laughs> okay, sige. Ayan na talaga. Tsaka bulok na. Yung smell ng necrotic tissue, it's here, no? This, uh, this is it. So, wala na talaga. We cannot save this anymore. It's been like this for quite some time. And nung dinala nila, it's so red. Nung nagpakita siya ng signs, usually mga kapag nag-telescope na kasi yung mga few segments, that's when they see signs of uh, vomiting, no? Lethargy and pain. And then, 
so hindi mo makikita yung ano yung aso na may ganitong passing sense no? so the longer that you delay the examination mas pa palaki ng palaki yung interception palala ng palala yung condition na so it's been like this for quite some time kaya ganyan na ah uh, the following day kita natin si Cody iba na itsura niya mas masigla mas malakas ng mas iba na yung demeanor mas responsive na siya sa paligid niya siguro nawala na rin yung pain niya but Si Cody cannot go home yet. Okay? Cody has to stay for us for a few days for us to monitor yung signs ng mga complications. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga complications na pwedeng mangyari if you perform this procedure? Number one, dehiscence. Ano yung dehiscence? Halimbawa, kapag nikiwa tayo sa abdomen, natanggal yung tahe or nabuklat yung tahe, that's what you call dehiscence. No? Nangyayari ito kasi sometimes, mabagal yung healing process nung aso because compromise ang kanyang health. Number two, kapag kinakamot niya yung sugat o kinakaskas niya sa, sa flooring, okay, masyado siyang malikot. No? Uh, we put the, the dog in a relatively confined area no? para to minimize din yung kanyang movement. No? Such that, pwede siyang makagalaw ng maayos pero hindi naman siya pwede makatakbo. Pangalawa is leakage. So, na nagtahi tayo ng dalawang intestines. No? Uh, pinagdugtong natin yung dalawang healthy intestines kung saan tinanggal natin sa gitna yung damage uh, intestine, no? So, pag tinahin natin yan, sometimes, hindi agad siya nag ng kusa. So, and nagkakaroon ng leakage. Lumalabas yung laman nung uh, bituka, which is very rich in bacteria. If that happens, nagkakaroon tayo ng peritonitis or yung pamamaga ng peritonium, yung abdominal cavity, eventually leading to sepsis, which is a very, very uh, life-threatening condition. Pangatlo is infection. Needless to say, so, kapag hindi maganda yung pagkakagawa ng surgery, sometimes nagkakaroon tayo ng infection intra-abdominally. O kaya kapag nagkaroon ng leakage, o kaya yung mismong sugat na, ng abdomen, yun yung nagkakaroon ng infection. So that's one complication. Number four, rather, is ileo. So any abdominal surgery yeah, involving the intestines, posible magkaroon ng ilius. No? Yan yung pagtigil ng movement ng bituka natin. Kahit na, mapapansin nyo yung mga patayo kapag natutulog, makikita mo, tumutunog yung bituka natin, gumagalaw kasi din sila. So kapag tumigil yung paggalaw nila, I call it, na, luman, nag-accumulate yung gas inside, and that's painful. No? Kung nagkakaroon ng kabag, yun yung nagiging problema. No? Kaya napaka-importante sa atin yung nakakautot tayo nakakautot yung mga pets natin no? lastly is the short bowel syndrome so imagine mo yung, yung segment ng intestine pinutol o binawasan natin ito and sometimes kapag masyadong mahaba yung segment ng intestine na pinutol natin that segment which is crucial in, in, in the digestion process ay nawawala so signs na diarrhea, vomiting, pain so these are the signs that we need to look out for post-op Siyempre, gagawin din natin ng blood test, no? Uh, para matignan sa do, do, infection, we can, we can find out through blood test, no? And leakage, you can also assess them through blood chem, no? Kung yung phosphorus, magnesium, and uh, potassium, or interplay of these uh, electrolytes, ayan ang tinitignan natin uh, during the confinement period. After five days, eto na si Cody. Ayan. Malakas na, makulit na, masigla na, nang ibig mo na, naglalakad-lakad na siya, hinahabol niya aso ko si Tyrion. So this is what we do ka sa clinic natin, no? mga aso na naka-confine. No? So before mag-open or after mag-close, pinapalakad natin sila one by one so that the mobility will encourage or hasten the healing process. Also, the circulation uh, sa katawan, mas ma, yung early ambulation, mas maganda yan para mas ma-encourage natin yung mabilis ang paggaling na ating mga pasyente. Also, you know, para mabawasan din yung kanilang boredom. Kasi sometimes when they're bored, they will start to pick on their wounds. That's, that's a problem. So because the owner of Cody allowed us to perform tests, no? Radiograph, yung ultrasound, yung blood test. And because she allowed us to perform exploratory laparotomy, nakita natin na may problema talaga dun sa loob. And we were able to perform intestinal resection and anastomosis which aided in the healing of Cody. Kung hindi niya siguro kung hindi niya ginawa yung isa doon na may sakit pa rin sa Cody o baka kung ano na yung nangyari kay Cody. Okay, so uh, all this because the owner 
agreed to us performing the procedure and performing the diagnostic test. Okay? So, kapag yung aso nyo ay nagsusuka, dadayaria, padala na agad, pasuri na agad sa inyong veterinaryo para magawa ng examination. So, I hope you learned something today. And if you did, please hit like naman. Tsaka yung subscribe para huwag tayong know the know lang. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. This is Dr. Thresho. See you again next week.